I have had this ever growing pile of things that I need to like mend, take up, take in, just all those little things that you kind of like put off and then never get to. So today I'm finally gonna do it. I put up a little questionnaire on Instagram. So while I'm fixing these pieces, I'm gonna go through and answer them. And particularly while I'm behind the sewing machine, I'll answer your sewing questions. And then I thought, well, we could go on a little adventure. I'll take you to my favorite cafes around the coast and I'll answer more of the personal questions when we're doing that. I thought this could be a nice little get to know each other more video as well because Apparently now there's a hundred thousand of you subscribed to my channel, which is just beyond comprehension for me. But I also just want to thank you all so much for supporting me along this journey. My passion project, which hopefully can become my full-time job eventually, but here we are trying to balance everything out. If you have liked the video, watched the video, subscribed to my channel, donated, bought a merch, just even sent me a DM of encouragement or even feedback. Thank you so, so much. It really does mean a lot to me and it helps give me the inspiration to keep going. So let's jump into getting through this pile. And I'm gonna answer your questions. Okay. First up, I need to take in a skirt for a friend because that's what happens when you are your fellow sewer. You gotta do things for your friends and family. When did you start sewing and why? I first started sewing in high school, just in like one of those like home ec classes and I fell in love with it and chose to continue doing it as one of my electives throughout the whole of high school. And obviously just on like weekends and whatnot, I kept it as a hobby. And I think another question is like, did I find it hard or how long did it take to get the hang of it? I would say keeping at it for a few months at school definitely helped me get like confident at the basics of sewing a clean straight line and seams and hemming and all that kind of stuff and then it probably took a couple of years to start making things that I actually wanted to wear and that's not to say that I didn't make things that I did wear but just like the finishing and the confidence in making something wasn't really nailed until probably a couple of years into it if that makes sense. So have I studied fashion or am I self-taught? As I mentioned, I learned the basics in high school and then once I finished, I highly considered furthering my studies in fashion and going and getting a degree in it, but I kind of took a bit of like a gap year and just like moved away from my hometown, only about two hours up the road, and then worked in a cafe for a year and met some people and just discovered a different career path, which was graphic design. And as soon as I came across that, that just like captivated me as a career. Like I love fashion, but I just always wanted to keep it as a hobby and I didn't want to lose that passion. And that's not to say that you can work in it and like not be passionate about it. But for me, I just had that gut feeling that it wasn't the right pathway. I kept sewing as a hobby on the side. So everything that I kind of know around fashion that, that I wasn't taught in high school is self-taught. And I've just kind of been learning through a trial and error process and looking up things online and I've kind of got to this point now where I feel confident in what I'm doing. In saying that though, I don't see myself as an expert and I feel like I'm forever learning new things. Like you guys always pull me up on things that there's better ways to do stuff and I always note that down. I'm happy to keep evolving and learning with the help of you guys and the online community. And I hope in return, I can teach you a few things. All right, item one done. What equipment and accessories do you recommend for a beginner sewer? I'm very minimal with what I have for sewing and I find that there are just a few key things that I need throughout projects and that is obviously my sewing machine, some fabric scissors, measuring tape, fabric chalk, pins, safety pins, an unpicker or a seam ripper. I think you can get away with having the bare minimum, especially if you are just starting out. As you go through projects, you might then come across more accessories and items that you need. Don't be turned off to think that you need all these like grand items to get into sewing you really don't need much. I have these oversized denim overalls. I love the like width and the fit of them but the length of them they're too short and that always turns me off wearing them. So I've just got this scrap denim fabric and I'm just going to add it onto the bottom of it to increase the length. While I'm doing that I'm going to answer the question about where do I find my fabrics. I would say majority of my fabrics either like thrifted items that I'm upcycling or like thrifted bits sheets or tablecloths and whatnot. This is Rusko everyone. My little fur baby. Okay, continue on. I yeah, mainly get my materials from thrift shops. That's for two reasons. Obviously, first, it is sustainable using something that already exists and is readily available. And also the price, like it is so cheap to just buy thrifted items responsibly. Obviously, do not over buy because there is a need for op shops and thrift shops to support those that need to buy things for cheaper. So don't go overboard with it. You can buy, you know, a big sheet for like $2 or you can get an item that maybe isn't ideal to look at at the moment, but you can give it a new life and upside 
recycle it. So that is my first option. And if I cannot find something that I need at an op shop, in Australia we call them op shops. I feel like online and around the world people call them thrift shops. So I might go in between saying that. If I can't find what I need there, then I have resources like the fabric store, which is an Australian based fabric supplier. They seem to responsibly source all the materials and they're mainly natural fibers, dead stock, eco-friendly dyed. So that is a massive tick. And then I will put another list on the screen of other alternatives. And adding on to this, I know there's a few questions about fabric and asking like best uses, where to source them, all that kind of stuff. I have a collab video in the works with someone. And also we have a fun little launch of a something that you can purchase that might help you. So keep an eye out for that. I am no expert in this area. I would rather get someone on board who has knowledge in this area. Then we can bring you the goodness that you need. So what is my most recommended piece for beginners to make? I feel like accessories are normally a very easy starting point. So like pillowcases, tote bags, little things like that. It doesn't really matter how it looks on. It's just about getting that good practice. And I'm sure they're mainly just squares and joining that. That is a great starting point. And then once you feel confident in those basics, out of my tutorials, I've got the cute Kemi crop top, the shirt crop top with tie sleeves, elastic waist shorts. So I'll link them all below as well. Someone asked what sewing machine I use. I've got a Janome and it is the model JR10112. I got this as a birthday gift 12 years ago. That's wild. And it honestly hasn't skipped a beat in in that time obviously I've had this for so long I have no idea what else is available at the moment but I feel like if you stick to brands like Janome brother and singer they seem to be the most like reliable brands that's probably not much up I feel like with Wendy has a good video about sewing machines and probably some other people essentials 101 for starters I have got a video called sewing 101 which actually shows you how to set up a machine some basic little things to go over to practice and get you in the flow of sewing I'm gonna keep adding on to this series and do like a 101 part two and show you how to do like pockets and zippers and maybe some more second level skills so I recommend that video as well I feel like there's other youtubers and people out there that have amazing blogs and videos for beginners so just look that up how do you organize your fabric including scraps okay I'm gonna finish sewing this and then I'm gonna show you my fabric organization way better now So for my fabric, I have this kind of like shoe rack thing in my closet where maybe back in the day it was probably a bit more intentionally organized, but at the moment I just kind of shove all my fabrics in there. It is a mixture of leftovers from previous projects as well as newly ordered or bought pieces of fabric. So that is where I store my larger stuff. And then for my scrap fabrics, I have a basket that I just have allowed to grow over the years from projects and I know it kind of looks like just a growing pile of nothing but I'm planning on putting together some projects showing you how to put like smaller, medium or larger size off cuts into use and I think the more it grows the more use it comes of it so don't be afraid to kind of put them in a corner somewhere ready for that rainy day. Next up we have my amazing vintage box that my auntie gave me of all my little bits and bobs for sewing accessories. I've tried to organize it in a way that is aesthetically pleasing as well as functional so over here I've kind of got all my random things like pins measuring tapes fabric chalk bobbins all that jazz then I've got my pinks and blues and other threads there then at the bottom I've got elastics pens paintbrushes, scissors. Then I've got my like yellows and reds and oranges. And then I've got my whites, blacks, greens and everything else in between. Very handy having that all in a beautiful box that I can have laying around. And then when my sewing machine is not in use, I have it sitting up on a shelf above my workspace in my office. And then this space that you've probably all become familiar with from my sewing tutorials is actually our dining space. Next up, what do you like the most about creating new pieces? My top three highlights about making my own thing would have to be definitely whenever I go out knowing that probably no one else is wearing anything like it because it is a handmade or upcycled piece. So that is always great to know that you're not going to turn up in the same outfit as someone else. Being able to create something that really is your style and that suits your body as well. I think that's really cool part of the creative process. And then thirdly, just like knowing where the garments come from and knowing the amount of love that's gone into it. And also whenever someone asks you where you got it from, you can be like, oh, this old thing? Yeah, I just made it. 
<laughs> Can you tell us about your biggest sewing disaster? Obviously I've got many occasions where I've like made something and tried it on and it's just turned out horrible, it doesn't fit well, the colour doesn't suit me, I don't know, just it's something has gone wrong along the process. So two that come to mind are one of my first projects in high school was we had to, I don't even know what the task was, but I ended up making a dress, it was kind of like a 60s shift dress style. It had like bias binding around the neck and the shoulders and in my mind it was just going to be the best thing ever and I made it and then as soon as I tried it on I realized that the color combination looked like I was a flight attendant. There's this cheap airline brand called Jetstar in Australia and it literally was the colors of that and it was just a bit of a devastation because it was literally going to be such a beautiful piece but now I just could not stop thinking that I was a flight attendant whenever I put it on and I just didn't really wear it so that was pretty sad but in most recent days I'd probably say this swimwear one like I'm so happy with with how it turned out but the process to get there was a bit disastrous but in saying that I learned so many new skills along the way and I'm thankful for that. Okay I'm just gonna finish taking this up and then we can continue questions. I have a heap of like oversized button-up shirts so this one I just decided to crop because I wear a lot of high-waisted things so I can wear unbuttoned I can button it up and it will just sit kind of in line with where my high-waisted things are. Super easy, I just cut it and then just hemmed it where I wanted it to sit. How do you develop your own patterns? Conveniently, I need to finish making a bucket hat, which if you have watched my videos, majority of my tutorials and anything I make is a self-drafting process where I normally just take something existing that I own and I like the fit of and then I just kind of recreate it from that and then make tweaks if need be. And then for stuff like the bucket hat, which I supply a pattern with, which currently is the only one that I do that for, experimented into I got it to a point where I was happy with the fit and the style of it and then I am a graphic designer so I had the ability to then turn that into a printable pattern. The thing that turns me off creating patterns for like garments is that I find our bodies are so different and I really don't want to be size grading and then not be inclusive of all the different body types out there so that's why I find the self-drafting process to be a much more easier way to explain how to make something and then you guys can adapt it to fit your body how you want. Maybe that could be a different video where I talk about maybe Maybe some techniques to recreate items that you already have and that's the list. This question kept coming up quite a bit about if I would consider selling my DIY pieces. There's two parts to this answer. I'd say yes I would consider it but no I don't want to be the one making it and the reason is that because I find my passion for for sewing is the process of being experimental and making something and then you know, having that reward of the outcome and I think if I sat down and just repeated making the same thing day in and day out for garments that I sell I think I would lose that passion and I really am making sure to do what I can to not lose my sewing passion so I personally wouldn't remake clothes but if I collaborated with a production source or a label that already has ethical and sustainable standards that I could kind of tap into that's where I would consider creating a line for and it is something I have talked to people that have major imposter syndrome when it comes to that because there's just so much that comes with you've got to you know come up with the garment design get it size graded go through the testing phase pick out the colors market it hope that people buy it hope that people like it and that I don't know, there's just so many layers to it and I think I need to work on some inner stuff to get over that and then maybe eventually I can come out with my own essentials but for now it lights me up sharing the process of how to make your own clothes and I think that is a more valuable thing to share rather than just adding more stuff into this world at the moment. What am I doing besides sewing? I assume that means hobbies wise, well that's how I'm going to interpret it anyway. If I'm not sewing or working, which either has me behind the sewing machine or on the computer, you will probably find me at the beach whether that is just hanging around with friends or on my very occasional picky day where I will go surfing you might find me on a longboard in the water I enjoy going on adventures whether that's with my partner or my friends again we're very lucky to have a beautiful hinterland just behind us and stretches of coastline and places to explore so I'm always down for getting out of the bubble and going somewhere new and exploring this beautiful country I get to call home I'm also probably hanging out with my dog going for a walk having dinners or cat chats with my family, love going to a good cafe whether that's by myself for work or catching up with people and little simple things like I love just getting lost in the world of YouTube there are some great people online I, particularly I have been loving like commentary videos or people that like dive deep into a subject like Tiffany Ferg, D'Angelo Wallace I just discovered this girl called like Teela Tequila, I think it is. Obviously Emma Chamberlain, just people that are like genuinely either interesting to watch or people that like dive into subjects and are good at extracting information and making it interesting. Beach, adventuring, with my loved ones or around home. 
if I'm not sewing or working. Some op shopping tips and tricks. I would say when I'm op shopping, I'm looking at the material first because I think no matter what it is, you can either upcycle that piece, wear the piece as it is, or just totally reuse the fabric for something else. So I'm looking for like colors that obviously match my existing wardrobe or colors that just match my style and my skin tone, I guess. And then also looking preferably for natural fibers like linens, cottons, and whatever else I can come across. You know, not every garment or pile of fabric is going to tell you that, so it might just go by feel, you know, what feels nice as well. It's definitely easy to get caught up in the op shop fantasy world and you're just very excited about what you're seeing and then you get home and you're like, actually, I'm not going to wear this. So always grounding myself when I am out to remind myself what I have at home. Will I actually wear it? Someone asked, how did my partner and I meet? I think he might actually be home. Say hello, Darcy, to everyone. Hey. <laughs> This is what I have to deal with. So Darcy and I have been together for just over 10 years officially, which is absolutely wild to comprehend. We met working at a surf shop and I guess it all just blossomed from there. How cute. <laughs> What have you always been too intimidated to sew? Well, previously it was definitely swimwear and I have now proudly tackled that and I have my beautiful pair or few pairs of swimmers that I can wear now. As you can see in the video from that, that was definitely a challenge and a big learning curve. So now that I have ticked that off, I would say definitely the most intimidating thing is pieces that have got a lot of details. You know, a pair of trousers that has like the zip, the pockets, the tailoring, the little details that make it look nice and also a piece that has to fit tightly. You'll probably notice that I avoid buttons and zips and pieces that fit and just use like oversized elastic gathered things but I have a few things in line that I'm going to give a go that fit under that category so stay tuned to watch me probably fail at that as well. I'm going to finish this bucket hat which is left over from a recent workshop. Two areas. First being a missing piece or a need or a want within my wardrobe, like feeling like something is missing and I need it to fill a gap. So then I will go about and search online for some inspiration of how I can make it and some materials and just details that would suit my style and my existing wardrobe. And then also just like obviously scrolling online or watching movies or getting lost in the deep depth of Pinterest and seeing what trends I guess are about at the moment but then also keeping in mind how to make them timeless pieces that I will wear for years to come. Because I think it's good to take inspiration of what's happening at the moment but then also make sure that we are adding pieces to our wardrobe that we'll want to keep wearing once this trend has passed. So how how do I find motivation to try again if I completely fail on a sewing project? I think my biggest learning over the years is to allow myself to pause and stop on a project if it's not working or if I feel like I'm forcing it and just take time away from it. And I think every time you step away from it, you come back with a fresh mind and maybe some new ideas of how to approach it. And then if it just is completely a fail and the end goal is just not coming to life how you want it to, I think maybe that's a time to go back to the drawing board and almost see how you can evolve this piece and turn it into a new project that will come out with a better outcome. I think the biggest thing to keep the motivation is to not be so hard on yourself and that probably every project is going to have its roadblocks along the way and if you can overcome them you'll become so proud of it afterwards so just think about that and don't let it ruin your mental state and ruin the creative process. It's really hard to pick just one piece that I have made over the years as my favorite but I would say style wise and also for sentimental reason my shirt cute blouse is probably my favorite. It is made from a tablecloth that my grandma gave to me and she has sadly passed away now so whenever I wear it I am reminded of her and plus I also just love the style of it as well. A lot of the times my tutorials will probably be about 10 to 20 minutes long but the actual reality of that is probably hours or days worth of filming that goes into it so by the end of it I'm just over being in front of a camera or over talking so I don't always go into detail of how I finish my pieces as I'm more into just showing you the steps of making it and then it's free for all for how you would like to finish it whether that be finishing up raw edges, ironing places, doing top stitches. I'll make sure that all my edges are hemmed and they're not going to fray when I wash them. I will go around any of the seams and I will overlock them or zigzag stitch on the edges. I have an overlocker but I've jammed it and I just have not figured out how to rethread it so speaking of I'm gonna go around and zigzag the edges of all of these so they don't fray whenever I wash them. Welcome to my van! Went to one of my favorite places on the coast and got this backed up to the beach so if you do hear any like wishy-washy sounds in the background that's because there's waves breaking pretty much right behind you guys and it's kind of a bit of a rainy overcast day. Let me get my coffee. Jeans will 
not a good idea for in the car. This ties in well, so what is your job? Well, I just came back from a meeting from one of my jobs. As I kind of mentioned earlier, I studied graphic design. I went to TAFE, which is just is a bit more fast tracked and they focus a lot more on skill based rather than theory based, I feel. What I do now is I run my own branding and design studio called The Binding and I have been doing that for about five years and my journey to that is, so I studied for a year. When I was studying, I got an internship. They then gave me an opportunity to keep working there after I'd finished studying. Could have taken a full time job, but I always knew that I wanted to eventually work for myself. So I went back to them and said, yes, I'll continue working with you, but I would prefer to do it part time. And then, so I worked there three days a week and the other two days of the week, I tried to build up my freelancing collection of work. And then also on the weekends, I worked at a cafe. So I was working three jobs. So that was intense, but fun. Eventually after two years of doing that hectic balance of those three jobs, my freelance work got to a point where I could jump into it full time. And I didn't want to be working under my own name. I wanted to create a brand or an alias, I guess, which I could work under. And if I ever wanted it to, I could let it grow beyond me. Like I could scale it to have staff on board, all that kind of stuff. So that is how the binding came to life. That was 2016 when I quit all my other jobs and went full-time freelance, which was terrifying, but so exciting, exhilarating, and I have zero regrets about it. So when I was building the binding, I then started working out of a co-working space. And when I was working there, I met two other people, which we then, all the three of us, co-founded a tech agency. So I was still working on the binding, and then I was working on this agency where we used to create these interactive experiences on Alexa, known as chatbots. Still, like, it's like this little chapter of my life, which just blows my mind that it ever happened. But I learned so much from it. I was heavily involved in like the tech startup industry. I went to LA and worked there for pretty much a quarter of 2017. I was in LA working and building on that startup while still trying to maintain my graphic design work. Eventually after about one to two years of working on that startup, the dynamics of us three co-founders got a bit toxic. We just weren't the right people to be working together and myself and one of the co-founders still remain friends. We both weren't the ones that were that passionate about it. We just knew the potential of it. And I think if you follow something for the potential rather than your passion you end up having a quarter life crisis or a midlife crisis which is what we both ended up having so all in all long-winded story stepped away from that startup put all my energy and focus back into graphic design and the binding in that area that is where the essentials club happened and now i have built the binding and the essentials club to a point where they are both my main sources of income okay someone asked how did the essentials club start so now i can kind of delve into that 2017 i was in a very down period of my life i would say it was a bit of a rock bottom I had a bit of an identity crisis, a career crisis. I had just come back from LA, glossy on the outside and was an incredible experience and I loved being there. But at the same time, I was very unhappy. And, you know, going to that trip, I thought I was going to come back and that was going to be the career and the pathway that I was going to be following moving forward. And coming back and not having that pathway anymore was such a blessing in disguise. Now with hindsight, I can see that was all meant to be. But at the time I was left with a very empty path in front of me. And and it was very scary. I think I had to do a lot of sitting down and reconnecting with who I was and what I actually wanted. I think I was following a path that had been mapped out for me, not that I had chosen for myself. When I did sit down, I realized the things that made me happy or that I could see myself doing as a career was obviously graphic design. And I really wanted to put more energy into my sewing projects, which was the Essentials Club. And my friend and I had this memory where we were sitting down in LA and I was like, when I go home, I really want to start putting energy into my own blog and my interest of fashion and see what comes of that. It just started off as an innocent little blog. I started getting interest from that. People reached out for me to do workshops with the Essentials Club, so I started doing them. I realized that people probably learn better, as myself does, visually being showed things, which then got me into filming the processes and putting them up on YouTube. And it was just one of those things where it's been a slow burner. November 2017 is like my first blog post. So the Essentials Club was born out of me realizing that I have to take control of my life and do stuff that lights me up, because if I keep following what other people are expect of me. I'm just going to continue having these burnouts. Trying to balance the two businesses of the Essentials Club and the binding definitely takes a lot of pre-planning and also flexibility. I think as much as I try and plan out my weeks, a lot of the times they don't go to plan because, you know, a client project might pop up or someone might need something urgently with my branding and design stuff. So that means I then have to put my Essentials Club aside or vice versa. I need to consistently sit myself down and be realistic that I am one person and 
find that I probably need to be more pessimistic with my planning if that makes sense. I'm very much an optimistic planner which means that I think everything is going to go to plan. Most of the time it never does so that always leaves me annoyed and frustrated with myself because I feel like I could have got a lot more done or I had a lot more things on my to-do list and I didn't get to them all. It takes a lot of personal development and figuring out what my workflow is and learning to say no to things. I want to do everything whether that be work related or social life related and having to learn you know when I am busy with work stuff that I probably have to say no to a lot more social things or when I have a lot of social things coming up I need to probably be more realistic with how much work I'm going to get through. I have a video on my The Binding channel which is my other channel which I don't put as much effort into but I do show you a week of balancing out the two. You'll see that some days I'm working crazy hours other days I'm going to the beach and enjoying life. To be honest eventually I would love The Essentials Club to be my main source of income and my main work. I don't think I want to give up the binding and graphic design work it really does fulfill me and I love it so much but it is a lot more demanding you know you've got to create these identities and designs that need to then please other people and I get a lot of anxiety around that so my ideal scenario would be I'm putting this out to the universe YouTube the essentials club being like 80% of my income and me being able to be a lot more selective with my graphic design work that I take on board and being able to space that out more so it isn't as full-on and stressful and therefore I could probably produce better work because I'll be in a better headspace the dream if this was my full-time thing I would be posting videos slash blog posts slash tutorials multiple times a week but as I mentioned before the binding and my graphic design stuff is my main source of income and work at the moment and I'm just at this weird phase where I want to be putting a lot more content out there for the essentials and when I start doing that I will probably see more steadiness with that but then at the same time I've got this demand from clients and work so it's like I obviously need to honor that it's almost like I need to just like take a couple of months off my graphic design work and then just like solely put it into the essentials and have that like awkward step over period but it's terrifying it's so scary stepping into a new area and I know the potential of it but I just keep letting that inner imposter syndrome win the internal battle oh my god my camera's about to die just get shit done when you can <laughs> I'm planned in the fact that I know what I want to get done but sometimes I struggle in figuring out a plan of attack of how to efficiently get it all done and therefore I'm always annoyed with myself because I don't get everything done that I want to Welcome to the inside runnings of my channel. I'm picking up my dog from my parents' home, which you can hear him walking around. Whenever I go out, sometimes I drop him over here just because I want him to have company. I don't want him to be home alone. But how full circle to come back here and answer a question because if you're an OG and you've seen my original videos, please don't look at them, they're all terrible. I started filming my tutorial channel on my parents' dining table and that is where we are today. And also, I thought this is where I could answer how long did it take you to save for your apartment? Again, there's probably a bit of a longer backstory, it's not just simply saving. I feel like it pretty much as well dates back to that same time where I started the Essentials Club and I really was creating that new intentional path of my life. Stepping away from that startup, I was still very much so just getting out of that mindset of senselessly consuming rather than consciously consuming. A part of sitting down and figuring out my life was going through and getting over any debt. Over those years, I had a credit card and I racked up almost nine grand in debt which is such an overhanging weight on your shoulders when you have that there and I knew that getting rid of that would obviously just help clear that history start a really strong foundation to move forward with so moving forward pretty much any savings that I could I put a portion aside into paying that off as fast as I could as well as putting a small amount as well into my savings so that when I did have my debt paid off I had a bit of a padding as well but as soon as I paid off that debt chopped up my credit card pretty much I then kept that mindset of putting aside the money for my debt but just transferred that into the savings account. We were up on the Sunshine Coast. We'd been there for six years prior to that. My partner and I lived there. We moved back down here for different career choices for Darcy. My parents were kind enough to let us stay here and initially we moved back here thinking we would only be here for a few months while we found our own rental property but finding a rental that was dog friendly was honestly the hardest thing and six months had passed and we'd kept saving and obviously we were paying board here and contributing to bills and paying our own food and whatnot but obviously that is not the same as paying full rent so we were able to put a bulk more away in savings that we would have been if we were still renting. We had a deposit saved by pretty much June the next year so 12 months it took us to finalize that deposit but obviously we had a little bit of prior savings and we had the benefit of being back here. Another blessing in disguise that we couldn't find a rental because it meant that we could save extra. But also I don't know if this helps you but we didn't save a full 20% deposit we had 10% deposit which means we had to pay LMI but hindsight I'm so happy we got in when we did and I love our little gem of apartment. Do you want to go home? Let's go! 
the sun has joined us finally and I'm going to answer these final questions while I attempt to add some extra length to the waistband of these pants because they are apparently way too tight for me. It's a little rapid fire questions. I am 26 years old. My favorite book is Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert, I think it is. And it's all about just like creative thinking and ideas and she just writes it really well. Probably the first book in a quite a while that I have been able to actually finish. So that's a good sign as well. Some upcoming projects are, I've got a jacket that I'm making out of a blanket. I've got some bags that I'm gonna be making out of some scrap material, some dresses that I've had in mind for a while now and also some trousers and plus many, many other things. I feel like I've always got an endless list of things to make. So don't worry, plenty more videos will be coming out. I definitely get that burnt out feeling after a while, especially if you have been working on something for quite a while and you would just, just seem to be butting heads with it and pushing through. So I always try and take breaks where possible because I find, as I mentioned earlier, when you come back, you just have a fresh perspective. I think also just letting go of expectations and this idea of it being perfect in our mind. I think obviously sewing over time, especially if you are just starting out, you will get better the more that you practice it so don't be so harsh on yourself at the beginning if things aren't quite going to plan that is the beauty of sewing there's going to be imperfections and I think we should all wear them with pride because that just shows what we have gone through to make it and it makes it even more unique as well lastly on a nice positive note what makes me happy I'd say probably in the past 12 months especially has really made me slow down and take in the little things in life. The top three things that make me happy would have to be my loved ones, whether that be my friends or my family, and just making time for them. I find whenever I do, I just walk away so much happier and more fulfilled because I'm with my people and they make me happy. Secondly, just getting out and about and especially exploring nature or even just new areas. I find whenever I'm surrounded by the ocean or by a rainforest or somewhere new and unexplored i just feel so happy and inspired and i always come back super refreshed so you'll probably find my partner and i out adventuring most weekends or me catching up with friends out in nature or just making time for those little getaways because they are so refreshing and personally as a creative they help fill up my cup as well so i can come back and do my best work Lastly, pretty much as I just mentioned, I am very much a creative and I need to make time for particularly projects that don't have boundaries. Like for me, that is sewing. I don't have like a brief that I have to be working with. I don't have deadlines. It is all just my own personal interpretation. And I find it is very meditative for me as well. Whenever I'm sewing, I am fully focused in on it. Nothing else matters. And yeah, I just walk away a happier version of myself. So I am always making time to get creative. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little insight into myself and the essentials club and the binding and all the things I have going on and hopefully it paints the bigger picture of how it's all come to be and hopefully it also inspires you on your little sewing journey as well. Thank you so much for your support over the years it means so much to me and like I mentioned I hope this can become a bit more of my thing so you'll hopefully see me popping up more often. Thanks so much again and I will hope to see you guys in the upcoming videos.